there's a history of certain words that are inflammatory that are often targeted and used for women. I think it's very interesting that Ashley continuously uses buzzwords. She says aggressive. Ferocious. She calls ferocious. A conversation that you initiated in an aggressive manner. Ashley, I just want you to know, after you use those terms with me, how many people inbox me, DM me, I don't know if you've ever gotten it, calling me all types of names, you bitter black bitch. When you use those terms, understand that it's a nod and a wink to certain people to say, this is what we're calling these women. Okay. I'm sorry, okay. I did not know that wow. aggressive and ferocious were I was just talking for to black you. women. It has nothing to do with the black race, and that's about who you esteem. That's if a you're dog women of population, and you are putting them on a pedestal and allowing them to determine who you are as a black woman, that's not on us. If you're, no, no, no. if you're doing something that's trying to incite a fight, Wendy, that was aggressive to me. We have to be aware the weight that our words carry and how Thank it's you. Thank you, Robin. Yes. I will never refer to a brown skin or dark Thank skin you. woman as aggressive because of her skin tone. Hey, you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Tyson. So in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing this specific scene from Real Housewives of Potomac. This reunion just aired this past Sunday on December 13th, and um, I've discussed reality TV before in the past on my channel. I don't really do it anymore because I just don't watch it like that. Um, the last scene that I was like on it, on it, was watching was Basketball Wives, and that last season was trash. And I think we all saw the way that, you know, OG was singled out. And the blatant colorism and, you know, Evelyn all of a sudden, now she's Afro-Latina. Girl, get the fuck out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to stop cussing. Girl, get the F out. But at any rate, um, after that train wreck, I don't watch any other reality TV besides Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, and I catch that on the free low. <laughs> you got to know the right YouTube channels. But at any rate, uh, when I was watching it this past week, I noticed Potomac's reunion. Another person who posted that, it was in the, you know, autoplay next video selection. So I was like, huh, I'll watch it. Um, I did have a friend tell me I should watch it before, but I just, I never got into the show. Um, I did know that Candace and Monique had an issue because one of the people on YouTube was covering it and I watched a little bit of her video, but I still never went back and watched the whole episode. So I have, understand I'm going off of the reunion alone. I have no context. So if any of these people have issues outside of what we're discussing, I don't know about it. Other than what I saw from the reunion itself. So with that being said, the reason why we're here today is their specific bit um, where they ended up speaking about colorism and basically the biracial woman, Ashley, likes to use um, dog whistles. And for those who are not aware, um, those can also be termed as, um, or not termed, defined as microaggressions and, um, what's the other word? What's the other word? Damn. Damn. Trigger words. There we go. So for those who need a definition, microaggressions are a comment or action that subtly or often unconsciously or unintentionally expresses a prejudiced attitude towards a member of a marginalized group such as a racial minority. And a dog whistle is a type of strategy of communication that sends a message that the general population will take a certain meaning from, but a certain group that is in the know will take away the secret intended message, often involves code words. Uh, a key example of this is when Trump basically said straight out, straight up, um, whatever he said about the good old boys. We all know who that was in reference to. If you know, you know. Um, so basically, he's using coded language. And the biracial woman, apparently, she does this quite a lot to the more browner skin, the castmates. You know, she uses terms like aggressive and ferocious when speaking. Um, now, we are going to get on Ashley later, but right now I wanted to discuss Monique and how I feel like sometimes, now I wanna say real quick, like I said, I haven't watched Potomac. I don't know if um, Monique and Wendy have prior issues that may be blinding her from being honest or coming to the defense of this biracial woman so heavily and caping for her. So, you know, sometimes you have an issue with somebody and it's like, that can blind your judgment. I feel like there are two people, um, prime example, Karen earlier, she was um, talking about Giselle and the way that Giselle dresses. And uh, everybody talks about it. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> Wendy basically said, 
You know, I think Giselle has pretty girl syndrome. You know, she's so pretty, she doesn't have to try. So, like, she really doesn't have to put effort into any outfit. She can just throw it on, basically what she was saying. And Karen even said, um, although, although her and Karen have some sort of beef going on, she said, yeah, I, I agree. She is pretty, a beautiful woman. Her fashion sucks, though. So, basically, you have... Person A, who even if they don't like this person, they can still be honest and give them props on something. And you have person B who is like, F them. I don't I don't F with you. I'm not going to give you any type of, you know, leeway. I don't F with you. Don't bring this person up, blah, 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 blah. So maybe if Monique and Wendy have a problem in the show that I'm not aware of, maybe that's causing her to behave more like person B because I don't understand... And Monique, let me just, let me not make this just a Monique name, because I think black people do this quite a bit. Um, I feel like we choose when and when not to connect the dots. Again, they may have an issue to where Monique's like, I'm not defending anything that has to do with Wendy. So again, I want to say that because I'm not sure. And that could be very what very well what's going on. But with that being said, going back to what I was saying, black people like to choose when and when not to connect the dots. Um, if this was Kim Zosiak, instead of biracial Ashley Derby, this was straight up white Kim Zosiak calling black women furious and angry. We would have the same response. If this was a white person, we would have the same response and we would want them to be held accountable. So I, and, and, that, and even if Ashley was full on black, it wouldn't change the fact that these are words that people use directly towards black people and directly towards black women to put a stigma on that. Now, let's get into Monique real quick. Um, from what I could see on the reunion, she appears to be a darker skinned woman. However, when you look up Google images of her, you'll get brown skin. So you can kind of judge for yourself where she ranges. But I'm sure that if she hasn't gone through some form of colorism, like at this point, nobody can say it doesn't exist. It does not, that's not a thing. We can't, you can't use that gaslighting tactic anymore. Not only are black people going through this, Asian communities, Indian communities, the Latino community, you can't say that this is not a real thing and this is all in our heads. So at the end of the day, that excuse is benign. Um, now this woman, to my knowledge, works in, um, she owns a blog, but she also handles her on her husband's real estate investments. So that tells me that reading comprehension should be an easy thing for her we're in wendy's message of dog whistles sending out certain signals to other people do you get that the words ferocious and aggressive are only for women of or black women women of the black race where did wendy say that <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, um, which leads me to believe I re-listened to the audio again and either I'm, I'm suspecting one, two, or maybe both things. One, Ashley and Monique are friends, the way she just kind of jumped into the conversation. And Wendy, I, I'm sorry, it's messy, but I love a good clear. And when Wendy said, I wasn't talking to you, it gave me life. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but nonetheless, if you go back, you'll notice she just kind of popped up out of nowhere. And it's like, I was addressing Andy and Ashley. I wasn't talking to you. And two, the way that they were going at each other, maybe they do have an issue like I mentioned earlier. Um, I don't know. I'll find out when I watch the next part, I guess. And then there's always number, uh, 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 sorry, option three which is the dark skin or brown skin woman who tries to make colorism a smaller deal than what it is to either appease, appear as special or maybe she's never been through it personally so she just doesn't believe in it. Um, but like I said, this all could just stem down to her and Wendy have personal issues. So anything that Wendy brings up, she's either gonna you know smirk off in the distance or she's gonna shoot it down instantly. But with that being said, let's get back to Ashley now that we've discussed Monique. Now, in Ashley's defense, she may not be aware of what her words can cause to her other castmates. Um, however, Wendy did give a clear breakdown, and I'm not sure if she was able to actually tell her everything, because you know they film for hours and they cut this down to where it's condensed into three hour specials you know one for this Sunday next and so on and so forth so she may have went into detail but I'm sure a couple of those DMs let's just go ahead and guess she's a dark-skinned woman you know the world's favorite punching bag 
So I'm pretty sure they told her to R herself, um, K her or not R herself, but that she needed to get R'd and to co K herself. And we could imagine all types of things. And that's not just white people. Cause let's go ahead and call out ourselves too. Cause black people will throw on the cape for some biracials like no other. But with that being said, um, I'm pretty sure white people were a big fraction of that too, because the words she used dog whistle, um, you know, um, trigger words. And also one thing that's kind of unique here is Ashley, although she is biracial, she definitely took to her dad a lot. Um, Ashley is not your stereotypical biracial, you know what I'm saying? Uh, medium light skin or lighter skin, you know, curlier hair. Granted, her hair texture, from what I can see, I tried to get a picture of her accurate natural hair. Um, and, I mean, it's kind of curly, but let's be honest, if you look at Ashley, she could pass as anything that she wanted to. So white people are going to be a lot more apt to defend her before they defend a J. Cole, you know what I'm saying? And she may even identify more with them than she does her black side. Not saying she has to pick one or the other, um, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. They'll, they'll look out for her. They'll go in for her. And they may not even genuinely be coming at Wendy because they care. It might, like I just said, it's the world's favorite punching bag is a black, dark-skinned woman. So it might just be, oh, she's talking about her. Let's go get her. But with that being said, I think that another element that could be putting um, a strain on the understanding of each other in between Ashley and, sorry, I lost her name, Wendy, could be the fact that there's a cultural difference. Ashley, to my knowledge, she's white and her mother's African-American. Wendy's last name is Osefo. I hope I pronounced that right. For people who don't know, that's not African-American. <laughs> she is Nigerian. She's the first Nigerian housewife. Shout out to her and also shout out to Garzelle Bouveau. Bouveau? I think that's it. <laughs> she's the first Haitian housewife. So at any rate, with that being said, uh, we love to see our diaspora of women doing big things. So um, with that being said, though, um, I think that cultural difference, it already, it actually came up in another area. Um, Ashley, the biracial girl, she felt like Wendy was touting her PhD in her face. I think they had a scene and look, you know how some of us, or some of our diaspora brothers and sisters can get down real quick. She hit her with the address me as doctor or something like that, if I recall. <laughs> and I fell out. I fell out laughing. <laughs> um, but with that being said, I've actually heard a diasporic person say something akin to that. Um, but um, Wendy said, if there's a cultural difference there, I apologize. I wasn't trying to brag, but that's very important to my people that you get an education. And I definitely can say that out of the people, from what I've seen out of the diaspora and people I've met, education is a big thing. So much that I'm going to give you all this example real quick because I want to get back to the colorism aspect. But my friend, she is Haitian American. She is, her and her husband are like, I think he just turned 30. They're in their early 30s. Three children, married, beautiful children. He makes six figures. She is a stay-at-home mom. She is black. How many black stay-at-home moms do you know? I'll wait. And he makes six figures. Um, when they were younger, she went to college. I believe she has everything except for her PhD. Her mom, even with everything that she's accomplished, her mother still brings up the fact that she does not have her PhD. So I'm just using that as an example to let y'all know that is how important education is to members of the diaspora. And I understand that things are tense in between our peoples, but I, I honestly can't have to say I wish more of, of our African-American parents would push for the doctors and the lawyers. You know what I'm saying? Not to say you can't, you know, rap, play basketball. You know what I'm saying? In fact, um, Lovely T just did a story on a... Um, a dentist who also doubled as a rapper. Um, he ended up getting shot. I hope he's doing okay. But um, he was doing good things for his community. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't out here selling dope. You know what I'm saying? He was making good legal money. Um, but at any rate, I hope that brother's doing okay. Back to what I was saying, though. Um, the cultural difference. I believe that um, another thing that diaspora people will tell you is race in America is viewed differently from race outside of America. Um, now some people go as far as to say Americans care so much about race. It, look, Ivy Park, 
them girls, them Russian girls who was mixed fishing, and at the drop of a dime, Russian people decided to uh, get racial with us and use racial slurs because we called them out on those girls appropriating our, appropriating our culture. Please don't have, please don't let these people in the world let you believe that race doesn't matter to them. Because at the drop of a dime, you piss them off, they're going to go to every slur that they can use on you because they know you're not accessible. You're on the other side of the world. So please, and I just use them as an example. They ain't the only ones. Ch Chinese people was mad at Trump calling C-19 the Chinese virus, but they was kicking our black ass A's, <clears throat> black A's out and blaming it on the black Africans who were living there. So, and we're not even gonna talk about how they're infiltrating Africa. And oh, that's a whole nother story. But nonetheless, don't let nobody in this world, diaspora or not, tell you that race does not matter. But with that being said, I do believe that we perceive it different, differently from members of the diaspora. You know what I'm saying? They, like, they don't even really acknowledge biracial people. And that some of them have certain names for them that aren't so good. <laughs> and, you know, we could talk about that in a separate conversation. But with that being said, whereas we have been genetically engineered to adore these biracials and defend them more than we defend ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So um, just to lightly touch on that, I think that could also be an issue of where the confusion is between Ashley and Wendy. Now, with that all being said, in the end, I'm always going to stick with my original thoughts on biracials. I've told y'all this before. I told y'all when y'all tried to say Shamar Moore is black, I've told y'all time and time again, stop expecting so much loyalty out of these biracials. I'm so serious. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to undermine biracials. We do have some true biracial allies out there. Without biracials, um, without Haitians, for all the people who love to try to, you know, make jokes about people of the diaspora, you know what I'm saying? Without a lot of these people, we would not have the freedoms that we have today. You know what I'm saying? The civil rights movement. So do not get me wrong biracial people definitely have in the past helped us and they definitely can now in the present and in the future be allies to us but that's what they are they are allies they're not our mules just like we don't want dark-skinned women to be anybody else's mules they're not our mules you cannot expect somebody with half of your dna to go up and fight for you that's just not gonna that's not going to happen every time all biracials are not going to be j cole for every malcolm x you have a sean king <laughs> And on that note, I think that wraps up the outro, wraps up the outro pretty nicely. <laughs> um, with that being said, I'm going to play this last clip where Wendy basically gave some helpful advice. You know what I'm saying? Because we are about solutions over here. Um, if you are a person who claims to be an ally to black people, show it in your actions. Monitor the way that you address us and speak to us. And black people, we definitely, men especially, need to work on the way that we address each other. Definitely. With that being said, we're going to let Wendy ride out as the outro, and I will catch y'all on the next video. Peace. Oh, and real quick, shout out to Robin for showing what true alliance looks like between a light-skinned woman and a dark-skinned woman. That is the work that it's going to take. Yes, you are going to have to watch how you label and stigmatize dark-skinned women. If that's not something you're up for, don't consider yourself an ally to the movement. It's as simple as that. At any rate, I'll see y'all in the next video. There has to be a level of accountability to say, yes, I may not think that there's colorism, but I have a level of accountability as a fair-skinned person that's not, not really, to use certain that's terms. That's not really related that's to the word choice that I use. You always do it, and I'm putting y'all know this. So let me ask you this. If a woman of color was acting aggressively, Absolutely. what would be the proper way to call that out or identify it? Something else, right? right. Or like, get I feel like, as they call me, maybe that's a better terminology. You refer to yourself as hood, so there's that. Maybe that's a better terminology. I don't know. I don't what know. What I don't know what I'm she's just curious about. because it, it's, it's interesting. English language. I mean, it's just, right. No, no, if honestly, you're describing a behavior, it is you, what it is. There is a plethora of words in the English dictionary that you can replace with so aggressive. Just, just like if you're raising red. your child, they but tell you don't call your child a bad boy. You can say, you know what? These aren't good decisions you're making right now. So you can substitute words. That's it. Just substitute words. It's definitely a delicate topic. It really is. And that's what it's about, talking about it so we can be better yeah. dealing with it. But it, it's difficult. Tamara from...